Hi, this is Alexis from Akenza. In this video, we will explore cellular IoT technologies, what they are, where they are used, and how they differ from other IoT connectivity standards, such as LoRaWAN. So what is cellular IoT? Cellular IoT describes a group of IoT protocols that are used to connect physical devices to the cloud via cellular networks. These protocols exchange data through the same mobile networks as our smartphones. Therefore, devices working with cellular IoT protocols include a SIM card with a unique identifier. The network carrier uses the unique ID to manage the devices in the network. Initially, the SIM cards could hold just one profile tied to one single service provider, which meant that the SIM card needed to be physically replaced to switch to a different service provider. With the introduction of the embedded universal integrated circuit card, it becomes possible to change service providers over the year without needing to physically change the embedded SIM card. This is a great improvement as it simplifies the global deployments of cellular-based IoT solutions. The devices in a cellular-based system transmit their data to a base station uh, or cell tower directly. From this point, the IoT data is then accessible on the internet in your cloud platform. Now, the term cellular IoT is used to describe different IoT network protocols, and it is sometimes difficult to navigate through these diverse technologies. What you need to remember is that the two most popular cellular IoT technologies are LTE CAT M1, also known as LTEM, and NB-IoT, or narrowband IoT. Both NB-IoT and LTEM have their origins in the 4G LTE standards and are below the LPVAN umbrella. These two cellular protocols were specially created to support IoT use cases. NB-IoT provides improved in-building coverage and it is designed to consume very little power and its hardware is relatively cheap. However, it is limited in data bandwidth and it is constrained to a 180 kilohertz narrowband. LTM or LTE CAT M1 is also a low-cost, low-power wide area network protocol but specializes in the transfer of low to medium amounts of data, up to 1 megabit per second compared to the 66 kilobyte per second of NB-IoT. In addition, CATM1 is also suited for mobile applications as it supports cellular tower hands-off, which was not the case for NB-IoT until recently. This is now changing in the next version of NB-IoT, which solves the issue of continuous communication in mobile applications. When we look at the global availability of these protocols, LTM had a first uh, slight advantage as it is compatible with the existing LTE network and therefore was adopted by many countries that had LTE coverage already. However, it is cheaper to put up a new NB-IoT infrastructure than LTE, so this is slowly evolving. If you deploy devices in different regions of the world, you need to pay attention to roaming agreements. This is where LTEM has a clear edge, as it already has cellular roaming agreements in place. Roaming for NB-IoT is comparatively limited. Finally, LTM supports voice functionality via VoiceOver LTE. This opens the door to broader human-machine interactions. For all these reasons, LTM and NB-IoT are able to cover a wide range of applications. NB-IoT is best suited for cost-sensitive applications with minimal performance requirements. So we're talking about IoT cases requiring small intermittent data transmission where latency is not critical. The higher data rates of LTM make it a good fit for the applications that require a larger exchange of data at a lower latency. Among the typical use cases of cellular IoT, we can mention condition monitoring, asset tracking, medical alert devices, electricity meters, and other smart city applications. Now, these protocols describe only the transmission of data at the network level or how the data is sent from the device to the cloud. To understand how cellular IoT technologies exchange information, we must look at the application level. Common IoT data protocols or application protocols include the likes of HTTP, CoAP, MQTT, and Lightweight M2M. These protocols define how IoT devices exchange information and communicate on the internet. They are responsible for ensuring secure and efficient data exchange. As with the IoT network protocols, these application protocols have different specs and characteristics, but that's for another video. 
To summarize, Cellular IoT is great for building IoT cases thanks to the broad existing cellular coverage, low power requirements, and potential cost saving. But how does it compare to another leading LP1 technology, namely LoRaWAN? The first difference is that Cellular IoT operates in the license spectrum and is run by operators on the existing cellular infrastructure. By leveraging the same infrastructure as mobile phone, Cellular IoT benefits from a broad coverage. The downside is that one cannot extend the coverage so easily. On the other side, LoRaWAN operates in the unlicensed spectrum and is run by telecom operators, private entities, or public communities. It can be deployed virtually anywhere and remote areas where cellular coverage isn't available. Looking at the data rates, uh, cellular IoT typically reaches higher data rates and lower latency relative to LoRaWAN. This makes LoRaWAN better suited for application exchanging minimal amount of data. Due to the asymmetric throughput nature of LoRa, um, firmware updates are much easier to handle with NB-IoT and CATM1. While both technologies have relatively low power requirements, LoRaWAN can support the longest battery life with some devices running on battery for years. That being said, there is no use in opposing these technologies. In the end, the requirements of the IoT case will dictate the choice of the IoT protocol. Different IoT protocols can even be deployed together inside the same project in order to have the best of both worlds. Whether you are interested in launching an IoT project based on LoRaWAN or cellular IoT, make sure to check out the Akenza platform. You can try out Akenza for free at akenza.io. And that's it about our introduction to cellular IoT. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.